We didn't believe to our ears because we heard Allah Akbar. It was the first time in our lives when we hear this under our window. Israel is suffering from the effects of years of war, attacks, and even the recent war in Gaza. What can we do as believers to help? There is a great need in Israel, and we must extend a helping hand to those in the epicenter. Hi, and welcome to this episode of Inside the Epicenter with Joel Rosenberg, a podcast of the Joshua Fund, a ministry dedicated to blessing Israel and her neighbors in the name of Jesus. I'm Carl Muller, Executive Director of the Joshua Fund. And today we present Evangelical Christians' amazing work in Israel and the impact Joshua Fund is making by working with different ministries to lend a helping hand. We're back on the road. We're in the Israeli city of Starot, right on the Gaza border. And we've come back to show the story of two friends of mine that are heroes. I mean, really, they're Israelis. They're Jews. They're also followers of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Messiah. Michael Beener and Dina, his wife, Michael is the pastor of the City of Life congregation, a, a Messianic uh, believing in Jesus congregation right here in Strode. And they've been here for years. I knew Dina when she was single uh, more than 15 years ago. And just a little while after that, uh, she met and fell in love with Michael and they got married. And now Michael is the pastor of this community. Uh, but you're gonna hear a, a dramatic story because on the morning of October 7th, uh, that Saturday morning, they woke up not only to rocket sirens going off and rockets inbound and all kinds of explosions, they woke up to the sounds of Hamas terrorists walking on their street under their windows shouting Alawa Akbar and shooting automatic weapons. And they began to see friends and neighbors being slaughtered by Hamas. It was the most terrified they'd ever been. We're gonna hear their chilling story of what it was like to live through that experience and to live, they, they lived. But we're gonna hear their story of being evacuated, but then also coming back. Why have they come back to continue to serve and bring food? and uh, humanitarian relief supplies to the people that continue to live here. There are people that continue to live on this border and you'll find out why they do and how this congregation and this couple serves them with the love of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, and why the Joshua Fund, uh, the ministry that my wife and I founded 17 years ago to bless Israel and her neighbors in the name of Jesus, why do we support them? It's an amazing story. Let's talk to them now. So this was a pretty dangerous place to be on October 7th. Can you just give us a context of what happened here? We are living here for so many years in the city of Zerod and a few years ago we moved right there. Here is our apartment in some of this, uh, those houses. So on the 7th of, uh, of October, we hear the siren and we went to the bump shelter. In each apartment you have bump shelter, safety room. So mm -hmm. our children uh, already been there. Okay. And after 10 minutes, uh, the sir uh, uh, siren happened. So we get out from the bomb shelter and we didn't believe to our ears because we heard Allah Akbar. It was the first time in our lives when we hear this under our windows. So you hear Arabic speaking people and you can tell, you know immediately it, these are terrorists. Yes, is it true? Because in the city of Zerot, it's a no Arab population, oh, right? maybe wow. one family or two. Okay. Everybody knows no Arabs here. All the Zerot's Arabs in Gaza. Yeah. We didn't believe it, but uh, we, uh, we, we saw by our own eyes, it's here. Yeah. And it started to shoot from the machine gun. This is, uh, was uh, my first machine time. Machine gun? Yes. Okay. First time in our lives when we hear it. And uh, Dina tried to record something, but then he saw the terrorists. Oh, wow. Came here. Over there. So, so you guys were looking down from your windows, yes. and they were uh, the, the terrorists were coming out all around this uh, yes. the store, Rami Levy. Yes, this small supermarket, and they came to our yard, and we lie down to the floor. We understand that we're not protected anymore because the boom shelter not protect us, it's not locked. It's not locked from it's the inside. Not, yeah, it's it's true. So we start to pray and our children afraid. Wow, really, wow. it's the first time. How old are your kids? 12 and 11 okay. years old, wow. boy and boy. They kill people everywhere there, here in this street. Mm. They shoot to the Rami Levy. They shoot for the some of the windows there. 
and yes, the they shoot to some of the cars there. Because you, you've lived here for maybe 23, 24 years so yeah. far. Yes. And then you guys Nine got married uh, years later. So you're, you, I'm not saying used to it, but you're strong. You, you live here for a reason. Yes. Like you're not usually scared, uh, even though it's uh, it's a hard place to live. But yeah. but on this day, it was different. Это просто мы мы не привыкли жить с ракетами, но мы знаем, что делать во время ракет. It's believe us. It's not normal also for us to live with the rockets and explosions. Mm. Anybody will live in these conditions, but. Uh, during the way, uh, during the um, years, we have some experience mm. how to react on mm. it, how to act at this moment. I know you guys love the Lord Jesus, but why do you live here? Uh, I'm surely know that God called me be here, mm. live here. For several times, I tried to leave the city because mm. uh, at that time, I've been unmarried person, mm -hmm. so and this is before me. I'll the choose to choose where I will live in the cities of Israel. And every time, я просто внутри себя четкий голос Бога слышала, что ты должна вернуться назад. But every time when I try to leave the city, I hear the understandable voice of the God. You must stay there because it's, because this is your place. Mm -hmm. I choose for you. I, это мой город. This is my city. Я люблю его. I love it. Yeah. When I came 2006, it was a, it was a middle. Okay. You came from where? From Ukraine. Yeah, Ukraine. I did my Aliyah from Ukraine. So, so to leave cities. Ukraine, which was peaceful then, yeah. to At come to time. Israel, but there comes a Sherot, and then fall in love, and then, and then stay, that's a lot. You have to really know God is telling you to be here. Yes. And then we pray together when we married, and if we understand God wants us here, mm. this is God's calling, and mm. we really see how God Marwakisly act here, uh, what God uh, does here during the many years mm. have been. Until today, we see so many miracles. Yeah. If we talk about the rockets, how rockets exploit, exploit between the buildings, like here mm. and here and there, mm. but not into the, mm. uh, into the buildings. Mm. Or if rocket exploit in the building, the family left and mm. we had so many miracles. One of the rockets exploded near our, our, our house. We left, not this one, another. Mm. It was in the night and it was a siren. Siren. And we not had a lot of time to run to bump shelter and rocket exploded and we sing in our living room. Wow. But it's not in our living room, in the kindergarten. Oh. Near to oh, wow. home. Like a, like, this tree wow, wow, from wow. us, so like close. this tree, wow. and Kirin God was destroyed. Wow. So God just lead the rocket, fly three kilometers over over all this way from Gaza to the road and stop near our windows. It's wow. like in the front in of the nighttime windows. in an empty kindergarten. Empty kindergarten. Yeah, nighttime. Wow. Do this miracle. Let's walk. It is a it is a miracle. So this is the bus station where our children. Mm getting the bus, so it's bus a short walk every morning many people were killed so yeah. they killed people in the, on the bus station and they came near bus stations and killed people here and it was many bodies this side yeah. and so, people who we know them so these are these are uh, neighbors these are our neighbors. colleagues friends even yes friends listen we uh, also friends also uh, we are the local pastors and we're yeah. helping many people uh, with necessary, uh, mm. necessary things, food, diapers, mm. and many people know about us mm -hmm. and we know about them. Mm. And when you recognize the faces, mm. you help them, you get them home for so many times. Mm. So you sit with them, you talk with them, mm. you bring the compassion and mm. now you saw them mm. killed. Oh. And also uh, on that side, somebody drew the car, they killed them. Somebody walked with the uh, with the dog here. Mm. They killed uh, some person, and then and, and it, was it this street where uh, the uh, yeah. the terrorist with the rocket propelled grenade? Wow, it, it is a miracle that you survived. But you were hearing people dying all around yes. you. Wow, wow. Our verse of the day today is First John the three seventeen to eighteen. If anyone has material possessions and sees a brother or sister in need but has no pity on them. How can the love of God be in that person? Dear children, let us not love with words or speech, but with actions and in truth. Our prayer requests today are, pray for pastors, leaders, and believers 
that they continue to serve there, that God will strengthen them. Second, pray that God continues to provide a resource for Joshua Fund and other ministries to continue to reach the people of Israel with the gospel and with the needed resources. This is our humanitarian storage warehouse. So now it's busy because we also have not so much time, not enough time to organize everything. Right, right. So many stuff we coming, we uh, putting, we bring to the people. Okay. Still diapers, food, uh, toilet pipers, mm. uh, and uh, here is some games. So here normally we park, we do the line from these two tables. Okay. Long line and park uh, the An food. An assembly line. Uh, yes, assembly line that also Joshua Fund bring us. Mm. Uh, and we put many, many stations, like four, six stations. And then people stay, six volunteers, four volunteers, okay. and packing everything. And every uh, every month, like in a normal life, a regular life, ordinary <laughs> life. So it's coming to the fa needy families. Okay. But now it's more, mm -hmm. and also we need more logistic. Mm -hmm. So how to help people during the war time. Mm -hmm. It's the first time in our life we mm -hmm. have such a hard experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is worse than any war yeah. that Israel has had. Everybody's telling me since since 1948, since yeah, the this Independence is War. True, yeah. this is what we feel. Wow. Well, I wanted to say that uh, the Joshua Fund is so honored to help you because you're serving, uh, caring for people, whether they believe in Yeshua or not. Right? Yeah. You just love people because you love people and they're part of Shtarot and they're needy. And, um, and that's what the Joshua Fund wants to do is help the pastors help the people. Yes, it is. Mm. This is our heart to help everybody, not mm. connection with any religion or something, just mm. need. All day, Joshua Fund staff and volunteers have been working with members of this local congregation to deliver bags of food to needy families all over the city of Starot. It feels like a miracle because by the grace of God and nonstop prayer, we haven't had a single rocket attack in Starot all day. And it's a true honor to come alongside this faithful pastor and his wife to bring food and other relief supplies to a sweet but shell-shocked Israeli family with nowhere else to go. <laughs> Michael and Dina have known Olga and her children for years. It's immediately obvious that they become more than neighbors. They become good friends. And today, as it happens, one of Olga's sons has just turned seven. <laughs> On the morning of October 7th, Olga was up early. While her children slept, she was walking their two dogs. But suddenly she heard the red alert sirens going off. She heard explosions everywhere and the sounds of automatic weapon fire. And then she heard her neighbors screaming at her to get back inside. And, and when I get home, uh, some of our neighbors start to cry to me, mm -hmm. uh, fast, 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 mm -hmm. run, run to home because okay. there is the terrorists. Wow. And I, I really didn't put my attention because I, I thought maybe the terrorists вообще. nearby um, nearby the wool because oh, nobody right. didn't believe. It, it, it was unimaginable. Is, yes, it's yeah. unimaginable. Olga's children are traumatized. She tells me they're not sleeping well. Sometimes they're even too scared at night to run to the bathroom. And she's too afraid to send them to school. Can I ask you uh, where you're from originally? Ukraine. Ukraine. Okay. Ukraine. So I'm also sorry about that. <laughs> um, yeah, you'd think that you'd be safer here, but, but why do you live in Storot? And how long have you been here? For 25 years wow. already, I'm here in Israel. I live in Israel. In Israel. I came with my father okay. to the city of Arad. Mm. I had my study here, okay. here in the College of Sapir. It's an university mm. here. And here, here, I, here. And here I met my uh, husband, mm. and they, this is why I stayed there. Wow, wow. Are you going to stay after this? Um, Yes, yeah. yeah. it is. Why? Uh, do I have some place? It's a sobering thought. Olga and her children have no other place to go. They can't go back to war-torn Ukraine, but nor do they have the financial means to move away from Starot to some safer part of Israel. And if that weren't enough, not too long ago, they suffered a terrible family tragedy. I don't get out because... Uh, 
Yes, because I had the tra tragedy. Uh, it's uh, when it happened one year ago. September. One year September. ago. One half year ago, my husband died. So she's Olga. She's widow, and the children is orphans. Try to imagine yourself in Olga's shoes. Your husband has died. You're raising four children and two dogs on your own in a war zone with very little money and nowhere else to go. I thank God she has friends like Michael and Dina who are standing with her, not out of pity, but out of respect, compassion, and unconditional love. And I thank God for the opportunity that he's given my Joshua Fund colleagues and me to come alongside them as well, to serve them in some small way and let them know they're not alone. Yes, hear you and even meet you. To share your story with other people. Uh, несмотря на то, что ты нас не видела раньше, но я с удовольствием поделюсь твоей историей, тем, что ты сказала с людьми. Спасибо. Спасибо вам. And Бог любит вас. <laughs> и мы Бога любим и верим. Amen. I'm glad Amen. He protected you. We also love and believe Поэтому мы здесь. God. This is why we here, mm -hmm. because we love and believe to God. One of the things I love about you guys, and ever since I first met you, I think 15 years ago, is how much you both love uh, Yeshua, Jesus as the Messiah. Um, so you've had many years of telling people about the Lord. Um, first, why? And then, are, are you seeing fruit? Are you seeing people say yes to the Lord? Да, конечно, я видела людей, которые принимали Ишуа как своего личного спасителя. For sure, I saw many people here who received Yeshua as a savior and the Lord. Это моя, это главная цель. Uh, какую я вижу здесь uh, на, на этой земле в Израиле, это говорит, что Ишуа, Машех и нет другого спасителя, кроме него. The, uh, this is the main goal uh, for why we live here in the earth mm -hmm. and why we are here in Israel to tell to the people that God loved them and have for them plan of salvation. Amen. You were telling me a story that when you saw the pictures of the people that were killed in front of that bus stop that you knew one of them. Я не знала всех. Я я знала некоторых. И есть там одна женщина, с которой мы знакомы уже, наверное, три года. И три года я молюсь за нее и говорю с ней, разговариваю о спасении. Yes, it was many people, but uh, one of them, it was my friend, mm -hmm. this who I get now already three years, mm -hmm. and we talked a lot for uh, for the Lord. And I pray for her already three years. Я считаю это настоящее чудо, что три за три недели до происшествия она покаялась и приняла спасение Иисуса. And it was real miracle that three weeks before she died, she prayed and received Yeshua as a savior and the Lord. И мое сердце спокойно, что она сейчас не пошла в ад. Had she been open to the Lord over those years, or sort of? Not interested. Нет, она полностью отрицала. No, she, she rejected. A true Israeli. Нет, она говорила, я, ты мне нравишься, я, я хочу с тобой she общаться, said, но не надо мне ничего говорить о Боге. She said, I love you, you are a very nice person, so, but stop to talk about God. Mm -hmm. uh, я еврейка, я ничего не хочу I'm слушать. Jewish, I don't hear you, I don't like it. Mm -hmm. И мне понадобилось время, чтобы показать, что Ишо, он еврейский мессия. It was needed time to show her that Yeshua, Jesus, is a Jewish Messiah. И просто пришел такой момент, что она сказала, да, я я верю, я понимаю, я хочу пригласить его в свою жизнь. And the moment came that she said, yes, I understand, believe. And nobody could have known, right? None of us, the, the government didn't know, you didn't know, she didn't know that how little time she had left before she would not be able to make that decision anymore. Amen, 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 amen. Да, это это правда. Поэтому наши сердца должны быть всегда готовы. And our hearts need be ready anytime. Wow. Thank you guys for devoting your lives to telling people, showing people, but also sharing directly, speaking to them about the Word of God, the prophecies, and who Yeshua is, how much He loves us. Our amen. our uh, our people really don't know. Yeah. But when we think of a moment where someone that you knew and loved and who said yes, finally was then killed, it, it, I, I, as tragic as it is, it, it also makes your lives worth it because you, you weren't quiet, right? You did share and she did say yes. Wow, yeah. praise God. Yeah. Slava Boga. Yeah. Amen, Bless amen. You. <laughs> Bless you, I'm so grateful for you, sister <laughs> and you, brother. Thank you. Wow, what an amazing story and an amazing couple. I love Michael, 
uh, and Dina Beaner. I, I've known Dina since uh, she was single, uh, since she, before she even met uh, Michael, and she was living here in Stroat. And then uh, not long after I got to know her, uh, uh, Michael was an answer to prayer, that she would find someone who loved the Lord and they could serve and minister together. And I love them and I love their heart. They're shepherds. They continue to love their people here in the city. Uh, they love them whether they believe in Jesus or not, but of course they want them to come to know Jesus. And that was an amazing story as uh, Dina told one of her friends, right? Uh, that uh, she loved and cared for and ministered to who didn't want to believe in Jesus. But ultimately she made that decision. That woman made a decision to receive Jesus as her Messiah. And three, le three weeks later, uh, she was murdered by Hamas. I just praise God that she made that decision in time. And I know she's in heaven now. And, uh, and I'm grateful for the ministry of Michael and Dina. I want to encourage you to continue to pray for them and for all the pastors and ministry leaders here in Israel as they continue to serve their communities, uh, particularly stricken communities uh, like the one here in Sturot. Uh, I want to encourage you to continue to, to give to ministries like the Josh Fund as we uh, hold up their hands, as we provide uh, money and supplies and, of course, humanitarian relief uh, to ministries like the one here in Sturot. Thank you for listening to this episode and learning about the work that is going on in the Middle East and the importance of giving and helping those in need, even when they are not believers. If you have found this podcast really valuable, please get in touch with us. Let us know who you are. Are you someone who is searching for Jesus? Here's where you can find it. Do you want to talk about something else on this show? Do you have a question you wish Joel to answer? Send any comments you may have to podcast at joshuafund.net. Your feedback is incredibly valuable to us as we develop this podcast. As always, you can check out our show notes for anything you heard on the podcast that you'd like more information on. For Joel Rosenberg and the Joshua Fund Ministry team, I'm Carl Muller. Thanks for listening to Inside the Epicenter with Joel Rosenberg. I'm Joel Rosenberg. On your left, you'll find some videos we've chosen specifically for you. We look forward to partnering with you to bless Israel and her neighbors in the name of Jesus.